A few days ago, there was the a terror attack in London, at Westminster, near Westminster, near the UK Parliament. We know that four people have been killed, uh, many have been injured. And of course, our heart goes out to those who aren't going to come home. They're just not going to come home after a day out ever again. And of course, what we do need to remember that it's not just an issue here in Europe. This is an international problem. Over 50 times more people are killed people are in the Middle East and North Africa. They're suffering, exactly. People are suffering yeah. daily base, on daily basis from the right-wing Islamist groups in many, many different countries. So the, the pouring, of, you're pouring out of grief and unhappiness about and objection and condemnation, it needs to be global. I think that, that's the first thing. And we all have every person or family who has suffered from the Islamists, they actually feel the pain of the families of those who lost their lives in, in the bombings in London. And we, we have to sort of yeah. say that this is a global issue and that brings global solidarity as well. But also when you look at the people who've been killed, I mean, they're from all over the place, aren't they? And that's exactly one of the ways that it shows that this is not about migrants. There are migrants who are also getting killed. This is not an immigration issue. It's about targeting a far-right Islamist movement. I was reading that the MI5 uh, says that there are 3,000 extremists, Islamist extremists in the UK. So clearly there's a need to target those and it's interesting how immediately after this they knew exactly where to go as well in Birmingham. So they know of these extremists and that's why the profiling of just generally Muslims or various nationalities is irrelevant and it wastes time and resources. It's targeting these known networks that are key. Yes, and Khalid Masood was born um, in UK. Uh, he's a homegrown, um, you know, part of a network of the um, Islamic terrorists, which are 3,000 of them at least on the MI5 list, and a broader range of them. We, we meet with them in universities and different places who, you know, the jihadist, the violent and non-violent version of them, we meet them in various uh, walks of life. And they're organized, they are known groups and they need to be targeted and people need to, everybody, all communities, everybody need to isolate these groups and they don't belong to civilized society and they need to be actually challenged in, at the society level and actually if they take, uh, commit criminal activity, they need to be punished severely as well. Yeah, and it's interesting because Khalid Masoud has this uh, background of violence, didn't he? And it's interesting because when you look at the Islamist movement or far-right movements, they are a bunch of hooligans and thugs. They're like the mafia. They thrive on violence. And so for there to be some sort of, you know, uh, trying to grasp at what are their the political reasons behind why they've committed such a crime. I mean, you were talking earlier about the fact that, well, lots of people face abuse, violence, and so on and so yeah. forth. They don't go out and kill people. Absolutely. Um, you know, if you face racism, I mean, Telegraph was saying that the first thing that triggered uh, uh, Khaled Masud was uh, um, racism that he faced in a village in Kent. Well, you know, normal... Um, I come from a tradition that normal activities that you face, there's no you join anti-racist movement. Yeah. If you face unemployment and poverty, you don't go and join UKIP and the right wing. You join the trade unions and organizations who fight for better life and try to organize the working class. That's what you do. The, so that's the alternative, the progressive, humane alternative. The alternative is not to go and join the extremist and or right wing fascist. You know, that's the, the, there is a choice that society is making and that's what we need to promote. If people have grievances of various kind, you know, don't justify terrorism. Organize, you organize, don't, you organize. You don't go and kill people yeah. because you, you are unhappy about, you yeah. know, somebody's made a racist comment. Yeah, exactly. We, we've all faced racism, uh, you know. Uh, we've faced, many of us have faced police brutality. Many of us have faced inequality, you know. You don't challenge it by doing exactly what you faced. You 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 take a humane alternative to it. And that's a you know there's a clear right wing narrative as well. People who actually want to create division. Islamists always thrive on a situation that there is chaos, yeah. and that that's what they want to do. And these are the terrorist terrorist acts actually they they commit is clearly targeted and politically motivated to clear chaos in society. You could see exactly this is what the right wing 
um, fascist view as well. You know, look at the narrative of Tommy Robinson. Immediately he's there, he's trying to, you know, there is a global war going on between people and immigrants and foreigners. Exactly and what the Islamists say as well. Exactly, yeah. and that's what, you know, they, they, yeah. they are, they've signed up to the clash of civilization, the narrative that Katie Hopkins gives on uh, um, Fox, News. Fox News or Nigel Farage. These are the right-wing narratives that have, bears no relation to experience of people who live in London or in UK. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing we need to yeah. challenge as well. People were united mm -hmm. brilliantly in Britain against uh, um, the narrative of chaos and what the Islamists want to achieve. And that's what we need to do. Definitely, yeah.